tutorial on power flow equations part two okay so in part one we talked about setting up a scenario we talked about voltages and current on a particular bus the impedances the admittances and how to define current for a multi-bus system okay in part two we'll talk about power now when we think of power what are some of the equations that come to mind okay so one equation that comes to my mind for example is that power is equal to voltage times current and power is also equal to the voltage squared over the impedance or the resistance, right? Let's put that over here. Obviously, this is real power, right? This term here, the P term, is the real power. And in a power system, what we have is we have a real power and a reactive power. And both of those combined is called the uh, apparent power. So the apparent power of the ith bus, and we'll talk about that a little more about what, what this particular term means. The apparent power of the ith bus is going to equal to the voltage of the ith bus, right? The voltage of the ith bus. And we're gonna multiply that by the current of the ith bus, right? And because of how the angles work out, we have to have the conjugate of the current. Okay, maybe I'll do another video on what this, why we have this conjugate term here later. But the apparent power is equal to the voltage times the conjugate of the current. And this is the ith bus. So that is also equal to voltage of the ith bus times the sum of admittance of the ith and jth admittance. We'll talk about this term a little more later. But uh, this admittance, you know, the conjugate of this admittance times the conjugate of this jth term. We'll talk about, you know, what these means later, but let's think about this from an intuitive perspective. Okay, so we're saying that this is voltage, right? And this term is basically that term there. And so the admittance times the voltage, all we're saying the admittance is just the one over the impedance and we're multiplying by the voltage the voltage is just voltage is equal to v over c and we all know that by ohm's law if you take the voltage over an impedance that is equal to the current so all we're doing is we're redefining what this current is and we're putting it in this form right so nothing nothing new here okay so and then that is equal to the sum of the terms and we'll start from j is equal to 1 to the nth bus uh, multiply that by the admittance y i j right nothing new there times the voltage of the ith bus and remember these two terms multiply that together that's going to equal the current and then we multiply that by the voltage of the jth bus and then we have to now take account of the angles of all of these terms okay so now uh, so now we'll put this big angle sign here and so remember you know the voltage on bus one has this tilde i the voltage on bus two for example had the tilde j and then we had um, this okay so the admittance okay so the admittance is gonna be equal to y i j okay and that is gonna have an angle of theta i j okay so that's what the admittance is and we'll talk about this a little bit more later but but the angle of apparent power is equal to the magnitude of admittance times the magnitude of the voltage at the ice bus times the magnitude of the voltage at the jth bus and then now let's account for the angles. So the angles are gonna equal, now we have um, the ith angle, which is the angle of this voltage here, minus the jth angle, which is the angle of the voltage on the jth bus, minus the angle of theta i j, which is the angle of the admittance value. Okay, so the next part is well we have this this apparent and like we said before apparent power can be broken up into real and reactive components and so the real component uh, let's 
before we talk about the real component. Let me make this a bit smaller. So SI is equal to the PI plus JQI. So here it is. So the apparent power is equal to the real power plus this reactive power. So these two components. So the next is, well, let's break these two terms. So PI, so the real power of the ith bus is equal to the power of the ith bus that's generated minus the power of the ith bus of, uh, of the, the load, right? The generated minus the load, that is equal to the sum J is equal to one to the nth bus, multiply that by Y I J, right? Some similar to that. Multiplied that by VI, multiplied that by VJ, and then we have this cosine term. So we'll throw in this cosine, and we'll say the cosine of the angle of I, right? Minus the angle of J, minus the theta of I, J. Okay? So this cosine term is placed here. And then let's do the uh, this term right here, the reactive power. So the reactive power, which is QI, that is equal to QGI. So the total generated uh, reactive power of that of the ith bus minus QLI, the total load reactive power of the ith bus, and that is equal to the sum of J is equal to one to the nth bus, right? And then same thing here, not doing anything special, but um, but here is where, where it's different, right? Now we're taking this sine term, right? Sine of the angle of the voltage on the ith bus minus the angle of the voltage on the jth bus minus theta i j. Let's make this smaller. It's really important to relate all three power. Now we we know this very well. Let's just review it quickly now. So how do we relate these three terms? Well, the way to relate these three terms is by the power triangle, right? This is called a power triangle. And what we're saying is that we have this angle, right? This angle of this triangle. And it's a right triangle, by the way. And, and the hypotenuse, which is the longer piece here, that is called the apparent power, okay? And then the adjacent, which is this part here, that is called the real power. And then the, uh, the opposite term, which is this part here, that is called the reactive power. And so S is equal to P plus J Q, right? Now, if we, wanted, if we knew what S is and we wanted to solve for P, then P is equal to S, right, what we know what we know already, times that by the cosine of this angle, right? Similarly, Q, which is this opposite term here, is equal to S times the sine of this angle, right, this angle here. And so it's very easy to relate all of these three powers, and that's essentially what we're doing here. We know what S is, we know what all of these angles are. Now we're just breaking up this apparent power into the real component and the reactive component.